These are feathers from the front of a masked owl. If I find them, there's a good chance the bird will be close by. Hi, I'm Boyd Wikes. I've been a conservationist all my working life and I've continued that passion into my retirement. So welcome to our garden in Margaret River. I love the variety and abundance of native wildlife we're so fortunate to have here. Those are white-tailed black cockatoos. They're an endangered species. And on a good day, this rarely seen western shrike tip. But it's at night that this place really comes alive for me. Tawny frogmouths, boobooks, and a surprising presence of masked owls, which we've only recently discovered in this region. But it's not the bird noise that keeps me awake at night. It's a persistent menace right here in Margaret River, the black rat. For those of us with veggie gardens and chickens, they're an ongoing annoyance. But for our native wildlife and pets, they can be deadly. So I'm off to see if the traps I put out last night have done their job. It looks like we've been successful. This is a black rat, Rattus rattus. And it's uh, been introduced with Europeans probably on the first sailing ships. It's uh, turned out now to be the major prey for a lot of our wildlife, like masked owls. It's not the rodents themselves, of course, that are the problem. It's the rat poisons that so many people are using to kill them. That's why I and many people in the Margaret River community are looking to find alternatives. And the first step is to take a look around your garden and see if there's anything you can change to make a difference. Compost is going to be one of your main attractants to rats. It's important to keep a lid on and check around the base and make sure that they're not getting in. This is our chook pen. It attracts rats as every chook pen will. One of the things is to get the food out of the reach of the rats. Particularly important if you're going to be baiting at the same time. So in the day, the food is down there. The food containers are secure with a rock on top. I check regularly, oh look there, there's a hole that a rat's getting in. We have a bird feeder outside our kitchen window. It's designed so that the plate and the seed is held securely in here. If some does get spilt over, the chooks that are attracted in, and we are going to experience some rat problems. When you've got a rat or a mouse problem, a lethal trap, a simple, quick death, is the most humane approach. An old fashioned snap trap, and these electronic traps can work quite well you just tip the animal into the ground and bury it. But here in Margaret River, we're very fortunate to have wildlife that can also be unintended victims. You don't want to sort of kill first and ask questions later. By using this cage trap and placing it around where I had rats in the chook pen, I also found I had Quenda, our bandicoot. I've caught them and been able to release them. You could place the trap high up out of reach of Quenda, but we also have small climbing marsupials here, Mardo and Fascagales. So I've persisted in using the cage trap here in my garden. For all of these traps, it's important to clean them between uses or else the scent of the animal that you've caught can put off another animal coming in next time. If you've used a live trap, you've then got the issue of what to do with the animal. We shouldn't be releasing it in the bush. It may be carrying rodenticides from other neighbours that have used them. I must admit in the past, I would have just dropped this cage into a barrel of water. Certainly, 
by far a more humane death than the days of dying from internal hemorrhaging that come with the rodenticides that most people are using. The solution I've come up with this cage trap is to uh, put the snap trap when the animal's inside, close the lid, cover it with a cloth and let the deed be done. And then... Once dead, it's important to bury the corpse well out of the reach of pets and wildlife and ensure it can't be dug up. If you've got noises in the roof of your house, the first thing to do is to find out whether it's a native animal or rodents. When we first moved here, there was a lot of noise in the roof cavity and some of it was pretty loud. It turned out to be ringtail possums. We knew they were getting in and we didn't know where. It took a bit of detective work. We found this one spot, this one weakness, that once we were able to block up at night when they were out, problem solved, then we just had to deal with the rodents. Welcome to the roof cavity of our house. I can access this part of the roof, and unfortunately so can the rats. So what do you do when you can't use a trap? I can't access this part of the ceiling, which is raked to the roof. It's directly above our bed. When the rats are in there, they really do keep us awake at night. And they've actually eaten out the electrics once. And that's a problem that you have to solve. This is the one situation where I've reluctantly had to turn to baiting. I use these first generation poisons in sachets. They're basically blood thinners and not lethal to animals that might prey on the rodent. When they're eaten, I put some more and quickly I'll get rid of the first rats, but if I've let them get a nest in there, it's going to take a while. This is a beautiful male masked owl. We've extracted the liver. It's being tested for rat poison. I don't know anyone that would intentionally kill a beautiful bird like this, but that's what's happening with most of the poisons that are readily available on our shop shelves. It's a little bit harder to take the measures that we're advocating, but isn't it worth it 